Well, good day, Mission Control. Today we're gonna to talk about air movement and exhausting the air in here. So let's go ahead and get started. So air movement inside of a greenhouse is hugely important. If the air isn't moving or if it's not turned over enough, the air can fill with spores of mold and fungus. Uh, it could also lose its CO2. So you need to actually have a way uh, to get CO2 in and get the bad stuff filtered out of the air. Now, if you're on Mars, you don't get to do this. <laughs> this would be a waste of air if you did this. Uh, so I'm not even gonna try to link this to Mars. This is just greenhouses on Earth Day, okay? So we need to have exhaust fans on the building so we can actually get that um, humid air in there if it's become stagnant, if, it, if it's filled with O2 instead of CO2, uh, which will happen as the plants start to grow because they produce oxygen, O2, and they consume CO2. So we wanna bring in that CO2 from outside, create almost a, a CO2 sink here where we could just suck that stuff in, and then we wanna shoot out the oxygen and bring in that CO2 so the plants have air to breathe. And like I said, we wanna get rid of those spores and those nasties that are in there and bring in nice fresh air uh, so everything stays nice and healthy. So this exhaust fan here, it's really important to this whole operation. I haven't had the chance yet to put the automation system control unit onto the exhaust fan, which is behind you right now. Uh, but I'm gonna be doing that hopefully within the next week or so. And that automation essentially is gonna be able to look at the humidity uh, in the building, look at what time of day it is, uh, and look at what the temperature is in here. We wanna try to get it where we minimize uh, the heater runtime because we're exchanging air. So I'm gonna write some, uh, some logic into the code so you can actually detect what the humidity is, what time of day is it, and probably get this thing where it actually runs at night at least once or twice because it's a cooler temperature in here at night. Uh, we keep it at 57 degrees Fahrenheit at night, uh, which is more inexpensive to actually heat, although it'll be bringing in colder air, so maybe that's not a good idea. Um, conversely, during the day, especially if it's sunny, it's game on time, man. It's like turn that thing on and let the stuff go. Just make sure it doesn't get below 65 Fahrenheit, which is where we keep the uh, thermostat uh, during the day. So I got to get that automation put. Well, in addition to the exhaust fan, we actually have six other fans in the building. This is lane three right here. We have this uh, fan going and we have a fan on each of the lanes as well. Now, according to my research, when you set up your fans, you want to have one going this way when you have a building such as ours split down the middle, one going this way and the other one going this way on both sides mirrored. That way you create a subcurrent of air moving inside of the building. Now when our heater kicks on, it is also another fan that blows air uh, towards you. And then this one will catch it and rotate that air around. And then the other side, it catches it and brings it back so that the cold air is coming back on the outside of the building and the warm air is going back down the middle. And then we have this circulation that's happening. Now we're learning uh, the reason why you really want these fans is because it helps to deal with mold and fungus and it makes for a healthier environment for the plants. If you don't have enough airflow and you have too much water, even if your humidity in the building is controlled, the humidity at the local spot right next to the actual plants themselves, because you know, like microgreens, they're fairly dense. So you can actually get a lot of water, uh, a lot of humidity, just in like a micro environment there, microgreens, micro environment. So you want the fan blowing some air over the top of those so that it takes away that water through evaporation because that moving air will help encourage the evap evaporation that needs to happen. Get that stuff out of there, get it into the bigger air circulation where the dehumidifiers and the exhaust fan can kick in. Now, in addition to the fans that we have going outside or creating that, uh, that eddy current essentially on uh, the side of the building, we also have two fans up high here that are pushing the warm air down and helping move that humid air away from the surface of the building to actually help with condensation and humidity control as well. So that's gonna, right now that's six fans total uh, just inside the building, seven if you include the heater when it runs, and eight when you look at the exhaust fan. Well, there you have it. We have a lot of fans, and we actually think we need to have a few more fans. We're gonna put one fan in the middle of each of the lanes uh, to help encourage that eddy current again uh, that I talked, at least I call it the eddy current. The current inside of the building, uh, there's two of them going. It is like an eddy current. So yeah, that would be right. Um, anyway, and that's gonna help us get the airflow we need to have better aquaponics as well as better microgreens and reduce mold and fungus potentials uh, that we've had. So this is gonna be a big improvement for us when we get those fans in, but um, 
air movement. Very, very important. So, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian, out.